The number of U.S. men's national team players that have been heading abroad and some heading back have been hard to keep track of. But don't worry, today we have the solution to that for you. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo and welcome to Tactical TV and welcome to a brand new episode. And today we're going to recap and review the transfers that happened for USMNT players leaving MLS and going abroad and also a few that have come back abroad from MLS during the January transfer window. A transfer window that's usually known for being very slow. But if you are a US soccer fan, this window was pretty busy. And since I have no social life, I decided to summarize all of it for you. There was a lot of money flowing into U.S. soccer or the U.S. soccer market throughout this window, which hopefully this brings more investors into MLS and USL and helps grow the sport. Or to a very least, since we have a lot of money coming in from Europe to the United States, we might lower our trade deficit. So regardless, it's a win for the United States. This transfer window got so big for the U.S. men's national team players in U.S. soccer that even the mainstream media kind of started to cover it. You know, the media sees money and they come after it. So there was a little bit of coverage. And it's what my grandfather used to say. If you pay the media enough, they might, they just might even tell you the truth or do something good. But enough of me talking. I want to give a shout out to MLS Buzz on Twitter. Go give them a follow on Twitter, please, for helping me with this video with a lot of news and updates. There was a lot of transfers to keep track of, and he most certainly helped me a lot. Go give him a follow. Now, look, when I talk about these transfers, they're in no particular order. I'm not ranking them. I'm just reporting to you the many transfers that happened. All right. So that's just to get that out of the way. So let's play the intro and let's start recapping these winter transfers. All right, the first transfer that we're going to recap is James Sands as he left the New York City FC to Rangers in the Scottish Premiership. James Sands left New York City FC on a loan for 18 months with an option to buy where the price tag was not revealed. These 18 month loans were pretty much trending in MLS this January. His current market value is 4.4 million. So let's assume the option to buy is around that. James Sands won MLS Cup last season for New York City FC. He does come from the same academy that sent Reyna and Scali abroad. Both have been pretty successful. And as the league, the Scottish Premiership may not be better than MLS. It might even be worse. Rangers and Celtic most certainly would probably be the two best MLS teams. So he is heading to a better team. I know it's debatable, but I personally think that Celtic and Rangers would probably win MLS quite often. So it is a good move right there. He's also going to get some Europa League soccer. Not a bad move. We'll see how it goes. The second transfer I want to go through is Brian Reynolds, as he finally got a loan out of Roma after having a rough season under Jose Mourinho. Brian Reynolds' current market value is $4.4 million as well, and he is on a six-month loan to Cordrick. I think I said their name right. I learned it just for this video. He was loaned out from Roma to the Danish League. He was struggling there, so I think this is a good transfer. He needs minutes. Hopefully, he comes back to the Serie A next season more prepared, more mature, and ready to actually play and have an impact. The next one is Daryl DK as he left Orlando City this winter to head back to English Championship. So Daryl DK went to West Brom for $9.5 million, a record fee for Orlando City as he heads back to the English Championship. His current market value is $11 million. And in my opinion, this is a good move. He reunited with the same coach he had at Barnsley, Valentin Ismail, goes to a league where he fits and can perhaps develop and be ready for Premier League a couple seasons from now or maybe get promoted. I mean, West Brom are fighting for promotion. And, you know, if they don't get promoted this year, who knows? Maybe they can get next year. Next one on the list is Ricardo Pepe that headed to Augsburg. Ricardo Pepe headed to Augsburg for $18 million plus add-ons. His current market value is $8.8 .8 million and that will likely be updated very soon to a much higher number. I wouldn't be surprised if it doubled. He is the most expensive homegrown transfer in MLS history. Also, there were reports saying that Dallas even held on to 10% of a next future sale. An amazing deal for Dallas. That's what you get for investing in your academy. More MLS clubs should follow the same recipe. Now, look, I am not a transfer expert, but I do think they overpaid. And the reason I think they overpaid is because they had to. Look, Wolfsburg already pretty much had a deal set with Ricardo Pepe. So when Augsburg came in to hijack the deal, they had to overpay. And also, yeah, there was the American owner influencing the deal money wise. Look, at the time, Wolfsburg did not sound like a good transfer, bad manager, good center forward. I mean, they had Veghorst at the time and not the best track record for developing Americans. However, John Brooks is there. Kevin Pared is there. So that's two Americans. Also, their center forward Veghorst left. So maybe Pepe should have gone to Wolfsburg. It could have been a better option. 
Plus, they're not going to get relegated and their green jersey is beautiful. That's just my own selfish opinion. Next one up is Caden Clark. And Caden's transfer is a transfer that I would call the return of the ones who never left because he went to Leipzig, but he came back to the New York Red Bulls and he will be with the New York Red Bulls this season on a loan. Leipzig paid $2 million for Caden Clark. His move was completed this January, but due to a turbulent season at Leipzig, they chose to send him on a loan back to the New York Red Bulls. I would have preferred if he got a loan abroad, but it is what it is. He needs to have a strong MLS season, a full MLS breakout season. And his current market value is $3.85 million. Next on the list is Jonathan Gomez. Jonathan Gomez left Lou City in USL to head to Real Sociedad B for $100,000. A small fee for sure. Promising young left back that can play for the US men's national team in L3. And we most certainly cannot afford to lose him. We need as many left backs as we can get. He will be playing La Liga 2. We had here at the channel. If you want to learn more about him, go check out our interview at the interviews playlist. The next update is Chris Miller that also left Orlando City just like Daryl DK. Chris Miller transferred from Orlando City to Hibernian for the same amount of goals that Christian Roldan has for the national team. Zero. Yes, they didn't pay anything. It was a free transfer. So yeah, Orlando City really blew this one as they let Chris Miller leave for free to head to the Scottish Premiership. Also, not a move I understood very well as Hibernian isn't a top team there like Celtic and Rangers and the league is worse. Maybe he's making more money there. I don't know the salary numbers. I didn't really understand this transfer, but good for Chris Miller going abroad to challenge himself or not. I don't, I'm not so sure if that's more of a challenge. Next one up is Kyle Duncan. Kyle Duncan also moved on a free transfer and he headed to Belgium, more specifically to Ostende. Kyle Duncan's current market value is $2.2 million and he leaves the New York Red Bulls after four seasons. The next one up is Sebastian Soto. And look, he has just been a major disappointment the past few months and I'm reporting it because he's still young. So we could still have hope, but Soto's career took a major downturn the past like 12 months or so. Earlier this season, Norwich loaned him to Porto B, a reserve squad that ended for whatever reason. Now he's at Livingston in the Scottish Premiership. We'll see. At one point, he was one of our top prospects for the center forward position, but hasn't looked good the past few seasons. Let's see how he does in Scotland. Next up is Kevin Paredes as he did leave DC United this winter. Kevin Paredes was sold from DC United to Wolfsburg for $7.35 million plus add-ons plus a future sale percentage. A club record transfer fee, by the way. His current market value is $4.4 million and will likely be updated soon. What do I think about this transfer? Mixed feelings. As I said before, Wolfsburg does not have the best track record for developing young Americans in recent history. But hey, can never blame someone for challenging themselves and heading to Bundesliga, one of the best leagues in the world. Plus, the money was too good for him to reject and for DC United. So yeah, as I have mixed feelings about this transfer, uh, to me, it's a positive. He's going to challenge himself in Bundesliga and hopefully he thrives. Next one up is George Bello. George Bello left Atlanta United to Arminia Bielenfeld, I hope I got their name right this time, for $1.98 million. Way below his current market value is $4.4 million. Understandable as his contract was going to expire this season and Atlanta United most certainly did not want to lose him for free. So he did also have offers and was close to signing in Belgium, but he decided to reject the Belgium offers to challenge himself in a much tougher league, Bundesliga. So... I got to respect that. Now, Armenia could get relegated this season. They're fighting against that. Let's hope they don't. But honestly, props for Bello for taking the challenge. Whether he's ready or not, we'll find out the next few months. But honestly, massive respect for accepting that major challenge. Next one up is DeAndre Edlin as he has retired from his European career. And that's probably not a joke, even though it sounds like one. DeAndre Edlin is back in MLS. He is going to go to Inter Miami and join forces with Breck Shea. Well, an interesting team. I'm going to have to go catch an Inter Miami game this season. Little fun fact about DeAndre Edlin. He has now played for two clubs in literally the extreme of the United States, right? Florida, so all the way down in Miami, one extreme. And then all the way in Seattle, where he used to play for the Seattle Sounders before heading abroad. Next one up is Austin Trusty from the Colorado Rapids. He will move to Arsenal and stay on alone with the Rapids at least till the summer, or honestly, maybe more. Look, this transfer, I'm not gonna go into details, but the Cronkies own both clubs, and let's just say this was a trick, tricky one, right? It was a trick done for MLS regulations and purposes, so. The bottom line of what I'm trying to get here is he likely won't ever be an Arsenal player. He likely won't play for Arsenal. It could become something like the Miazga move to Chelsea and he'll just get loaned out several, several times. Hopefully I'm wrong, but that's the vibe I got from that transfer of 
the same ownership and also a player that I don't personally see as an Arsenal level player. Next up is Cole Bassett, also from the Colorado Rapids and also left them. Cole Bassett leaves the Rapids and heads to Feyenoord in the Eredivisie, the Dutch league, on an 18-month loan with an option to buy. There you have it, another 18-month loan deal. I like this move. It's a real challenge as he does head to one of the top four teams in Eredivisie, a league that, despite MLS analysts thinking that it's much worse than MLS, Eredivisie is better than MLS and he's moving up for sure and he's going to one of the top teams in the league. We got a clear sample of that just by watching Luca Del Torre that plays for a much weaker team in the Dutch league. A good move for Bassett to develop and his current market value is a pricey $6.6 .6 million, which his option to buy is probably around that. Now Taylor Booth that is still currently a Bayern player, but he has signed a contract with Utrecht and he will head to the Dutch league over the summer. So he signed the deal right now and he'll head in a free transfer to Utrecht just during the summer. And I think this is a good move. He's not getting minutes for Bayern and probably won't get minutes for Bayern. Now moving to this league, which is also a high quality league, can help his development. This is another positive transfer in my opinion. The next one is Jose Gallegos. Gallegos will head from USL to Sanderjeski in Denmark for roughly $500,000. He was playing for San Antonio FC as one of their top talents in USL. The attacking midfielder had 29 games, 7 goals and 4 assists last season and is currently 20 years old. Next up is Justin Che, a friend of the channel right here that we had here for an interview as well. So go check that interview. Now let's talk about Justin. This was a massive move in my opinion as Justin Che joins Chris Richards at Hoffenheim. At one point, it seemed like he was going to join Bayern, but that didn't happen. He arrives at Hoffenheim on an 18-month loan with an option to buy. Again, the same deal we talked about being trending in MLS. And he heads to a strong Bundesliga team. The downside here is that he does arrive in Germany and he's also eligible to play for the German national team. And there have been reports that Germany wants to bring him into their youth national team. So that is not good news for the U.S. men's national team fans. But in terms of development, this is good for Justin Che. Yeah, hopefully at one point during this loan, he gets Bundesliga minutes as he develops. Remember, center backs take a little bit longer to develop. He's only 18, so it'll take a while. Don't be surprised if he doesn't get many minutes for this second half of the season. All right, now transfer number 17, and I just have one more after this one, so a total of 18 that I'm covering here. And this one is Fullerton Balogun, as he did go on a loan from Arsenal to Middlesbrough, a very much needed loan, right? Balogun is a little too old to be playing at the U23s, right? He's 20, turning 21. At this age, you need to play a senior level, right? So he wasn't getting minutes for Arsenal as he struggled. He goes to the English Championship. He'll be getting minutes. We'll see how he does. He's an American English dual national. Which, I mean, depending on his development, we might want to recruit him. We are struggling with the nine at the moment, so who knows? But just to make it clear, I've watched him play a little bit for Arsenal in the beginning of the season, and he didn't impress me. That's all I'll say for now. Now let's talk about Matt Turner's transfer, which, yes, he's not leaving now in January, but he will leave during the summer. So there have not been any official announcements or confirmation from the club, but we saw Taylor Twelman report and confirm it. We saw Fabrizio Romano confirm it. We even saw Greg Berhalter confirm the deal. So let's assume it's official. And being official, the deal would be around 7 million euros plus 3 million euros in add-ons. So a total of 10 million euros. This is a pretty big deal for New England Revolution and Matt Turner. Now, my only issue with this is that Matt Turner will probably be the backup for Aaron Ramsdale. And, you know, having our two best goalkeepers sitting... All right, a couple quick chances I'm just going to make. Costa left the Colorado Rapids and went to the LAFC, and Paul Riola arrived at FC Dallas. I know I didn't want to talk too much about those because I don't know if people cared about it enough, but I do have to mention because these are players that have been called up for the U.S. men's national team. All right, everyone, that does it for this episode. I want to thank you all very much for watching. The list of America's Abroad keeps growing. So keep an eye on our USMNT Abroad series where we update you every Monday and Friday on their performances. I want to thank you all very much for watching and have a great day.